Hello again. So I thought I was done talking about holism and a holistic view of the world, but then I realized I wasn't. And then I looked at it and there's so much good stuff here. We're just gonna keep going on this. Okay, so he talks about how um, for, for early humans, okay, um, no, knowledge was seen as something that humans were given by God through revelation. Um, so it was just this sense that, that, um, right, like in Abraham's day, kind of like back in that time period, it was like the God, you know, God or God's revealed divine knowledge to the priest, maybe, and they just received it. And it was like, and that was kind of the view, I think, in the Old Testament with the Jewish scriptures and kind of this, this sense of like, God reveals something and we receive it and ooh, we have received it. Like this is, um, but then he talks about Descartes, um, insisted, he says, if you, if you asked how we knew what we know, the standard answer was God told us. That's how we know. But then starting with Descartes, um, he insisted that we can know what we know, not because of a divine, divine being chose to reveal it to us, but because we arrived at that knowledge through our own reason and logic. Now, this was a new level of our involvement, which was a good thing. Um, so instead of humans as passive recipients of knowledge that the gods decided to give them, you know, we, th this concept of, of the scientist emerged and this idea of us <clears throat> exploring and measuring and looking and seeking and <clears throat> doing scientific research and experiments and kind of determining stuff about the universe for ourselves. Um, and he says, like, that was good, but then that had its limits. Um, he says that affects how we filter knowledge. He says, as reason and logic became more and more prominent, other ways of knowing became less emphasized. So it was a really cool leap for us to become, instead of being passive recipients, to become more actively involved. But then we swung to the other side of the pendulum and we were so fascinated with, you know, um, the age of enlightenment and this idea of, of logic and reason that we focus so much on what we could know intellectually. Um, he says, does everything you know have to be proven intellectually? And he's just like, there are other ways of knowing than only those of the intellect. Um, he says, outside the lab in the course of our very real lives, some experiences act on us. We engage with them passively as they happen to us. And so he's like, we swung from one side to the other, but then I love the way he basically talks about how we need to marry these two things together. Um, they seize us and capture us and woo us and abduct us. We don't stand over them. They jump us in a dark alley and put us to the ground and won't let us go. We are way too complex and so is the world. Too much surprise, too many possibilities, too much that defies our limited logical categories to fit everything through the narrow filter of reason alone. Um, which we talked about. And he says, we became disconnected from a number of other ways that we know and feel and experience. This, I think, is crucial. I think this is so important. This is like a theme that I want to come back to and back to and back to and look at how different authors talk about it and pull it all together and be like, what does it look for us to, you know, and this basically touches, he's talking about holism and, you know, the whole is greater than the sum of the parts. But this, you know, goes right in with this sense of duality and that we just have this sense, which I think he's about to get to that, this sense of like the sacred and the mundane are separate. And in my reading, as I'm seeing you know, like what people are, what these, you know, spiritual teachers and experts are talking about and what is helpful, what we need, I'm like, ooh, we need that. We need holism. We need to get rid of the duality um, and see, see our lives in a much more holistic way. Um, okay, and so he says, you know, if everything can be explained without any outside supernatural or divine factors, then the universe is ultimately the sum of its parts. Um, this belief system is based on reduction. Um, Get whatever it is down to its tiniest pieces and you'll find, you know, whatever answers you're looking for because in the end, things are no more than what they are, no more and no less. But they're not. You know, so he talks about Newton. Um, where is it? 
Um, okay. For many in our world, somewhere along the way, reality got divided up into the secular and the sacred, the religious and the regular, the holy and the common. The understanding being that you're talking about either one or the other, but not both at the same time. This disintegrated, un disintegrated, not integrated, understanding of reality, the one that puts God on one side and not the other, the one that divides the world up into two realms, it's lethal and it cuts us off from the depths and separates us from the source. Um, okay, and I love this. He talks about how um, we need to see science and faith as dancing partners. Um, and he says to see them at odds with each other is to confuse the levels of hierarchy. Um, and he says, I say this because when I'm talking about God, I'm talking about the source of all truth, whatever labels it wears, who says it, wherever it's found. Um, and then he tells this really cool story um, about somebody seeing an angel, and he says, I hear these stories all the time. Um, he talks about how basically everything is... And he's like, strange things happen. The earth is exactly the right distance from the sun. Um, and all these things are miraculous. He's like, let's use a very specific word here, miraculous. You, me, love, quirks, sex, chocolate, the speed of light. It's all miraculous and it always has been. When people argue for the existence of a supernatural God who is somewhere else and reaches in on occasion to do a miracle or two, they're skipping over the very world that surrounds us and courses through our veins and lights up the sky right here, right now. We live in a very, very weird universe, one that is roughly 96% unknown. It talks about how 96% of the universe is dark matter that, um, as far as we can tell, is full of like pulsating energy that probably helps everything sustain itself but we can't see it and measure it and figure out what it is but it's probably energy and it's unknown 96 percent um and all right one second all right so next in the next one we'll talk about both and language